give your thoughts, man, on the culture of Christian hip hop right now. I think you've been around long enough. You've done collaborations. I know by now you understand, you know, somewhat of not all of the business side of it. And, you know, from the time you started to where we are now, what's your thoughts on the state and the culture of Christian hip hop? Hmm. So, yeah, I consider myself somewhat of a bad, not OG. I got the young boy calling me OG and up. So I guess that means I'm mm-hmm. qualified for, you know what I'm saying, by standing. But I think we are, so I have a two fold to it. I think we are more healthy than we have ever been talent and business wise. Okay. I would say from that standpoint, I think we are growing and are very healthy in that aspect, even down to people like yourself, people like Trey, other DJs that know the importance of, of radio placement of of spins, BDS, sound skin stuff, knowing the importance of getting in those lanes and really making sure that we present great quality music, but also can generate revenue. You know what I'm saying? So even in all aspects of that, I think we're doing so much better in professionalism with the business standpoint. Talent-wise, just a lot of guys out here really do their thing, really do real well. A lot of them is not my taste. You know what I'm saying? But I do have my ones that I still rock with, you know what I'm saying? But I think talent-wise, you see, I think you see a nice bouquet of different colors, different styles, things like that. I'm going to say that. When it comes to character or movement, like brotherhood and kingdom, so I'm going to say kingdom, I think it's important that we have to continue to remind ourselves without God, none of this is possible. Um, That's number one. Number two, Jesus died for that too. That's period. You see what I'm saying? I think we're in a place now where social media has really given us this, man, they feed us this dopamine, man. And we, we, we addicted. Yeah. We're addicted to attention. We're addicted to just the beat of going back and forth. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. In a lot of aspects, and sometimes we just, just just be quiet, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And let the music and let what we do speak for ourselves. But I know we're at different times. Everybody want to be personal. Everybody want to worry about his business. And I get it by opening it up. I do the same. But I think we it's just very important that we understand that this is a business and you have to know how to still move without jeopardizing who you are as an individual. You already got enough in you that's gonna that's gonna have you going through anyway. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think that it's really beneficial to be talking reckless to each other publicly. You know what I'm saying? I love dialogue. I love to get into it and do our thing and stuff like that. But I think there's always a healthy way of doing that, even if we disagree from aspects of how we believe. But I think there, I don't want to sound like the old man in the room, but I just really feel like we got to, we got to remember how far we've come. You know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of, I think a lot of guys care not to remember that because of what we did to them. I think a lot of these young artists don't want to really have nothing to do with the OGs because when the OGs were young, they kind of just shun the young boys. You know what I'm saying? Young boys hold on to that when they pop. You know, it's like, y'all, y'all, you want to check it for me then, don't check for me now. So we got a lot of that going on. So I really just, you know, I try to pray for the community and pray that we kind of keep our heads on the straight and narrow when it comes to what we're supposed to be doing. And like, what's the big mission? I know we're making money. I know we're doing festivals. That's cool. But we got to still keep the mission at the forefront so we'll never forget why we're doing what we're doing. So.